In today's episode, I am taking you to the famous Portobello Road Market in London, England. Portobello Road Market is one of the largest flea markets in the world. And if you are looking for antiques, the day I would recommend going is the main day Saturday. And that's because all of the antique stalls between Portobello Road and Kensington Park Road are open and packed with vintage and antiques. Saturday is the main antiques trading day and it generally starts around 8.30 to 9 a.m. But if you want to beat the crowds, you've definitely got to be there before the lunch crowd arrives because the streets end up getting packed. Check out this cloisonne tiger. This is incredible. I've never seen anything quite like that before. That is really neat. I'm going to ask how much this is. How much is this tiger? That's really neat. Yeah, he is. I love the colors on him. Yeah, he is nice. You're going to find everything from new goods to food stalls to handmade items. And the antiques are mixed in throughout the entire market. Pricing is going to be all over the place. So if you see something you like and you're feeling like the price is just too high, set it down and keep walking because you might run across a vendor only a few spaces away that's selling antiques for half the price. Also, don't always believe everything you're told. There are a lot of newer replicas that look like they might be antique items to an untrained eye. So know what you're looking for, have a budget in mind and go and have an awesome time. That fits you. It's, I mean, the sleeves are a little short, but you roll them up. They'll always be short. We're trying to find a French chore jacket that fits both of us. I like a little bit oversized and he likes kind of fitted. I think that works. If you roll those up. Those are pretty short, but that's as good as it's getting yet. It looks cute on me though, right? I have long arms. That one does fit you better, but I like the one I have on. <laughs> Not that old. How much are the hedgehogs? Five pounds? This each? is the name of the studio. Bricklin. Handmade. One of pieces. Shade for it. Okay. I have the shade. How much is it? Uh, 20. 20? It's got a really nice shade on it. Yeah, yeah that's a nice a one. Yeah. He knows how to rewire, so that, that would be doable. Yeah. I have to re I take it live on the stage, I gotta rewire it anyway. Oh, that does fit it perfect. <laughs> oh. And it's even got the brown velvet on the bottom. Oh, man. If you want. I, th I think we go for it. This is going to be a It's only 20 pounds. We're going to possibly mail this back um, so that we can get the lampshade too. Or we'll just take it for now and then decide and figure out what we want to do. Yeah. But I think it's worth it for 20 pounds. <laughs> yeah, if you have to wear it on your head, you'll do it. Just say it's a hat. It's a specialty hat. For 20 pounds, can't pass it up. I think I spotted a Don Friedman. 
think so. Yeah, maybe not. It's got ships. That's kind of neat. No. No, I don't think it is. It would typically have a little signature clay piece or something. I'll look it up though. That's pretty neat. Look at this cat art. Jesse, look at the cat. That's hilarious. This cute cat. There's some kind of pottery down here. Is it rooster? It's broken. JG. These lanterns are pretty neat. It might be Denby, the brands. Yeah, they are Denby. Those are nice. If we were home, I'd get those. Those are nice. And I like the Hamza hand door knocker. That could be cool for the studio. We'll see how much it is. What's this bear doing? Oh, it's not a bear. It's like a, what are those called? The mythical? Is that a nymph? I don't. I can't. I have book hands. Like, I know them. I, I keep thinking of like the um, Chronicles of Narnia. What were those deer humans called? How much for this one? Twenty. Yeah. That, that the other one is thirty. Yeah. Yeah. This is a great place to bring friends and family that are into secondhand and vintage shopping. But also don't worry if you're on vacation with your sister and she's not that into old stuff because there are so many small shops and bakeries and handmade items. There's definitely something for everyone at this market. Old carved marble mantles. This is neat. So when you come, make sure you pop into the little storefronts that have antiques and vintage because a lot of them are much larger than they look. There is food from all around the world here at the Portobello Market. This is one of the reasons I love London so much. It's such a beautiful and diverse city with people and food from all around the world. So the market is here in Covent Gardens and it's under the big sign that says Apple Market. And every Monday, they set up these adorable little stalls with vintage. So there's going to be probably around 70 to 80 of them today. So it looks like we got here nice and early and everybody is just starting to get set up. We're excited. We get first pick. And then it looks like just across the way, there is more vintage. Yeah. Ooh, ooh, baby. We found it. So this one is where it says Jubilee Market. This looks good. I like when they just dump it on the ground in boxes. You can dig through. Yeah, that's beautiful with the boat. That's so funny because I was just saying last night I was disappointed I didn't find art. There we are. I manifested that. You've heard of Lambert? Oh. Maybe that's a good one, seaside one. Oh, it's a waterfall. What date does that say? 
Does that say 18? Yeah, 18, 20. 18, 23? 23, is it? Wow. Oh my goodness, and it's an oil. I don't know if that's a paint. I think it is because of the way that the, the light reflects, you can see the texture. Is that one dated as well? 1822. Wow. Oh, it is. 1822. Oh, it's on porcelain. It's on oh, it's painted on porcelain. It's just amazing how old some of this stuff is. You oh, just, yeah. We just don't have that back home, you know? What is that for? It comes off. Five pounds? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll take that. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you. How much is this little rug? I'm 30. 30? Okay. Thank you. Um, I will, um... I'm going to get this nutcracker too. And this angel for five. And then I also like this art. It's got this woman just standing in the forest. Thought that was really pretty. These are five each? Yep. Okay, Wonderful. It's at least a Larson. I know, I collect Same as this them. one. I've never seen the seal in sure. person. It's very cute. I have this little bear. Yeah. How funny. How much are you asking for this? Uh, 95. 95? Yeah. Okay, that's wonderful. I would almost get it, but I already have one. But that that's one is very tactile, isn't it? She is adorable. She's very cute. Uh, do you know it's funny because I'm half Swedish. And are just, you really? And she just makes me think of my granny's house oh, in Sweden. Oh, well, that's so oh, honestly, cute. Mary's going to get both the Lisa Larsons. I'm excited for you. We're going to have twin bears. I have this one. My first trip to London, we didn't make it to Portobello Road and I was pretty disappointed, but it just didn't work out for us to be there on a Saturday, which is when all of the antiques and vintage are out. So I was thrilled to be able to get to plan a group trip where we were gonna be able to be in London on Saturday to hit Portobello Road when it has the most antiques. My biggest tip with Portobello Road is to go early. We were there before it opened and so people were pulling out and setting things up as we walked the market. Portobello Road is a very long market and it actually kind of splits off when you get to the end. So don't miss that turn because some of the best deals were on that street. Here's the thing about Portobello Market. Yes, some of the prices are gonna be very high. They're gonna be top retail value, if not even higher. But that's because this is a world famous market that attracts not only tourists and antique dealers, but also very high-end interior designers from all over the globe. But just like every market I've ever been to in my life, the same thing is true. There are always deals to be found. That's part of the excitement. I wasn't filling up a container, so I didn't want to go there and find a million things for great deals, even though that would obviously be very exciting. My goal was to take my time and hunt for those treasures, and I definitely found some really great deals. My first find was the Cloisonne Tiger, and this one is beautiful. It's blue. It's something that's different. I have such a love and appreciation for Chinese cloisonne, whether it's in figurines, in dishes, in bowls, in plates, or in jewelry. I think it's incredible. And I have never come across a tiger before, let alone a blue tiger. This was another one that was really hard to let go of. I really considered keeping it. In fact, I think I had three online shop sales between when I found it and when I actually listed it because I just wasn't sure I was going to let it go. So if you were the person that bought it, I hope you love it. I brought that beauty all the way from London. Probably the best find was the Italian Bitter 
Toasty Lamp for only 20 pounds. These are worth several hundred dollars and I just can't believe it was just sitting there. And this is another reason why you have to go early because we had already purchased that lamp about 20 minutes into the market, even opening. There were still no crowds yet. So go early as people are setting things up, do a quick scan through the market and then take your time picking your way back through. That way you've let all the vendors get everything out that they're gonna have out for the day, but you're still there at the beginning of the market. Most of the best deals that I have ever found at a vintage market have been as dealers are opening their spaces and pulling things out of boxes. Just make sure that you are respectful and that the vendor is ready to sell because as somebody who has sold at flea markets many times over many years, sometimes it can be a little bit overwhelming when you're trying to get your space put together and people immediately are buying. So just out of respect, I would say try to gauge how that vendor is feeling. Do they look really stressed out? Should you come back in five minutes? Or is that piece so good that you're willing to just stand there and wait until they're ready? There's definitely an art to it. So you've just got to make sure that you're being respectful at all times while still not missing out on the good deals. Another one of my favorite things that I found at the Portobello Road Market was the French chore jacket. We only ended up getting one that fit me, not Jesse, unfortunately, because all of the sleeves were too short for him. But that's actually something that both of us had on our goal list for when we were traveling in Europe. And I ended up only paying 10 pounds for it. Overall, I was really happy with Portobello Road. Now, will I necessarily make an effort to make sure that that's what I'm doing on my Saturday in London the next time that I'm there? I'm not quite sure to be honest. Honest. One thing I will say about Portobello Road is to go hungry. There was so much food everywhere. We had just eaten breakfast, so we weren't hungry. I think the only thing we ended up buying was a coffee and a pastry from a local bakery. But if you're into street food, they literally have an entire street full of food. If you were interested in getting the details, the dates, the times, the websites for all of the flea markets that I am taking our group to on this London trip, I'm going to have links in the description below. And make sure you are subscribed because this is going to be a four part London series, plus Norway, plus my complete haul and my packing tips. So make sure you are subscribed so you don't miss when these episodes come out. I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. And you can easily make your website stand out and be beautiful by using one of their many, many customizable templates. I have been selling my vintage finds on my Squarespace website for over nine years now. And with this new year, I'm thinking it's time for a website refresh. So I've been having fun going going through all of their templates and getting ideas, trying to decide what I want to do with my website for this new year. Not only will your website be beautiful and easy to build out the way you want it, it will help you engage with your audience, sell anything you want, your products, your content, what you create, and even your time. Squarespace gives you all of the tools you need to create a beautifully designed space. Head to squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you are ready to launch your own website, head to squarespace.com com slash left coast to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. I ended up purchasing more items at Covent Gardens than I did at Portobello Road. I found some beautiful artwork for only 10 pounds each, all of which sold immediately after I listed it. I love when there's a table and it's just full of things to dig through. I found several vendors that had huge piles for only five pounds each item. Some of them had broken glass or missing stones, so I really had to get down and dig to find the good ones. If you visit Portobello Road, I would plan at least half of a day because there is just so much much to look through and all along the street there are vintage and antique stores that you can pop into. Some of them look small in the front but once you actually get inside there are three or four floors full of vintage. So don't go thinking you're going to be out of there in an hour because I promise you if you like vintage you're not going to be out of there in an hour. You're going to be there for half the day. These earrings are one of my favorite finds I've ever found. I am so sorry I am not selling these stunning earrings. I actually had to test them out to make sure that they were not too heavy and that they didn't hurt my ears, which they didn't. There are so many different beautiful colored stones and everything is so intricately cut and perfectly set. These are signed sterling on the back. They do not have the artist's signature. I did a little bit of research. I'm quite sure that they are Native American crafted, but I haven't been able to figure 
figure out who the artist is on them yet. But I will not give up. I will keep doing research. So if any of you have any pointers in the right direction, please let me know in the comments below. I had my hands full when I found this amazing brooch. So I didn't film a clip of me finding it. This is by David Anderson and it is a Norwegian brooch out of sterling silver. Isn't it amazing? I purchased this from the same vendor that I got the earrings from and I love it so much that when I went to Norway, I might have gotten it tattooed on my arm. <laughs> I've got myself a little black pottery collection going here. So this first one here, you saw me flip over in the footage, and this was made in Romania. It has this beautiful design on it. I love that it's in the style of a two-handled jug. It adds a lot of interest when I have more simple vases next to it. My wonderful English guide, Steve, told me that this was made in England. It is stamped Prinknash on the bottom, and it was made by monks in the Prinknash Abbey. Back in 1942, the monks discovered a seam of clay, and they ended up making beautiful pottery out of the clay all the way up until 1997. It might be small, but I'm really excited to have learned the history on this and add it to my little collection. So now I have one that I found in London from Romania, pottery made by the monks, and then I found these two on my recent travels in Budapest. So if you haven't seen my Christmas markets video, you definitely should go and watch that. I found both of these at a little thrift store in Budapest. I will be sharing more on my complete haul from this Europe series, including all of the incredible jewelry items that I found at the very end of this series. I'm also going to be sharing all of my packing tips when you travel abroad and you want to bring home lots of goodies. So make sure you don't miss that episode. Well, I did find some great things and I had a lot of fun. I feel like in the upcoming videos, you're going to see even more treasures for better prices. So here is a sneak peek at what's coming up in the next episode where we are going to hit the car boot sales in London. 